In the previous video, we looked at data hazards in the case of the ALU implementation and found that we could essentially get by without having to lose any clock cycles at all. We are now going to look at load hazards and find that in this case, we actually need to stall the pipeline for at least one clock cycle. And we'll look at how to go about implementing that. An example of a load hazard is shown in the set of instructions here. The very first instruction, LW, loads a value into X2. And that value is subsequently used by the AND operation, the OR operation, and the ADD operation in the next three clock cycles. The fourth cycle after that uses something else, but doesn't matter. I mean, the main thing as we have seen earlier is primarily the next two instructions are the ones that we would mostly be concerned about. So let's look at the pipeline flow diagram corresponding to a load instruction. And this makes it clear why exactly we have a problem that could not be solved, unlike the case of the ALU operation. Remember that in the case of the ALU operation, the result was available in the EX stage. However, the result for a load is only available in the MEM stage once it has got the data back from the data memory, which means that no matter which way we look at it, we are looking at some kind of an anti-causal dependence over here. The result, which would be obtained from data memory and would then get written into the MEMWB register, pipeline register, would need to be used by the AND operation, which is the very next operation. Unfortunately, the AND operation has is going through its EX stage at the same time that the data memory fetch is happening for the load instruction. Unless we do something about this, the AND will definitely end up operating on the wrong data. And there is no way that we can do any forwarding in order to get data back to it at the right time. Obviously, what needs to be done is to push everything down. Can I push the AND operation down by one cycle? Of course, that means I would need to push the OR operation down by one cycle, the AD operation by one cycle, and so on. In other words, everything needs to shift down by one clock cycle, effectively stalling the pipeline for one cycle. This diagram shows what that would look like. Clearly, what we have seen is the AND operation has now come to the next clock cycle, and we have the OR operation and the add operation, everything has been shifted down by one clock cycle. The primary thing to notice over here is what has happened in the second instruction. The second instruction, which was an AND, has effectively been converted into a NOP. NOP stands for no operation and is effectively a kind of instruction that passes through a processor without changing any part of the visible state of the processor. This is important to keep in mind. A NOP could be any kind of instruction as long as it has no impact on the functionality of the processor. What do we mean by functionality? The only way that something can change the internal state and change subsequent instructions is if it either causes a register value to change or causes a change in some memory location. If all that is done is that we perform some add operation or some AND operation and then discard the result, then effectively this is a no operation. It has had no impact on the behavior of the processor. So we need to find some way by which we can convert the AND that is currently here into a no operation and repeat the execution of the AND at the next stage. Keep in mind that effectively what we are saying is the AND operation that was fetched over here has now been shifted to be fetched once again, if necessary, in cycle number three. As long as we can manage this, the rest of the functionality of the system will fall into place and will go smoothly as required. This diagram shows how we could go about implementing something like this. The important part over here clearly is this block marked as the hazard detection unit. What does the hazard detection unit do? It essentially needs to check whether the previous instruction was a load and if so, whether the output of that load is something that we depend upon. Keep in mind that if the output of the load was going into register X3, for example, and was not being used in the next clock cycle, we actually do not have a hazard and the pipeline could have proceeded normally. So one thing that is important to note over here is, if we 
were able to write our code in such a way that we never had dependencies directly from one instruction to the next, then we do not even need to worry about this kind of hazard detection or mitigation. The problem happens only when the output of the load is being used by the very next instruction. If there was some way by which we could have got some other instruction in between that did not depend on the output of the load, then we may not even have needed to worry about this kind of stalling. And in fact, there are certain kinds of architectures that actually make that choice. They say that the problem is now up to the compiler. The compiler needs to somehow ensure that it is going to make sure that there is some other instruction in there. And if it cannot find another instruction, the compiler has to explicitly insert a no op in between the load instruction and the next instruction that uses the result of the load. Now, if you think about it from a performance point of view, this is exactly the same as what would happen in the hardware that we are describing right now. Whether the compiler inserts a no-op or the hardware inserts a no-op is not really the programmer's concern. The programmer only con cares about correct execution of the program that has been written. And if the compiler was smart enough to figure out that it could just have solved the problem by inserting a no-op, then the hardware could probably be simplified and we do not even need to implement a hazard detection unit. On the other hand, this now makes the compiler much harder to get correct because it needs to be sure that it knows about all possible hazard conditions. And in other words, the code that is generated by the compiler for one processor, which perhaps does not have a hazard detection unit, will not run correctly on another processor that has been implemented with a hazard detection unit or vice versa. So hazard detection in any case is something that can be implemented in hardware. It does add to the complexity because after all there is additional logic. What we are concerned about here is how we can go about doing it. The important thing to keep in mind is what are the things that we need to ensure as a result of hazard detection. We need to make sure that no changes are made in the state of the system. That is to say, no updates happen to a register that should not have happened in the course of the correct execution of the program. Now, for the case of nulling out the AND instruction and repeating it, you can see that what we have done is we have introduced two new signals, the PC write and the IF ID write. These two signals are effectively gating signals for the program counter and for the IF ID pipeline register. When those signals are equal to zero, we assume that the PC and the IF ID do not update their values. In other words, even if the PC under the normal course of events would have incremented to PC plus four, by setting PC right to zero, we are forcing PC to remain at the same value it had in the previous cycle. Keep in mind that by the time the load instruction has reached the decode stage and we know that it is a load instruction, the AND instruction has already been fetched. So we cannot block the fetching of the AND instruction the first time around. What we can do is, as soon as the load instruction hits the decode stage and we know it is a load instruction, we set PC write zero for the next clock cycle. What happens as a result is, the AND instruction will be fetched from the instruction memory one more time. And whatever pipeline values were there in the IFID register will remain as such and will not change. Another very important thing to note over here is the fact that we are also inserting zeros into all the control signals that propagate downstream. Why is this? Remember that the AND instruction had already been fetched in the first clock cycle and had made its way into the IFID register. If we do not do anything, the AND instruction would then send its control signals through the next stages, the ID, EX, EX, MEM, and MEMWP stages. And whatever computation was supposed to happen would go ahead and happen in any case and would eventually end up updating a register file. We do not want that to happen. We want the AND instruction to be executed on the next clock cycle. And therefore, what we do is we make all the control signals, that is the ones that are to be used in the execution mem and write back stage, we force them to zero. What happens when those signals are forced to zero is, in particular, the reg write signal, which would cause a register value to be updated, 
and the mem write signal, which would cause data memory to be updated, are forced to zero. And that means that nothing can change in those values. In other words, the AND operation will pass through the CPU without updating or changing any of the state of the system. How exactly is the hazard detection done? It essentially needs to look for what kind of instruction you have and whether the destination of that load instruction corresponds to one of the sources of the next instruction that we are dealing with. As I mentioned earlier, if we do not have such a dependence, then there is no hazard and you can allow the next instruction to proceed directly after the load. So to summarize, to implement a stall correctly, all that we need to do is set all the control signals that modify state to zero. We need to prevent the state of the system from being updated. We also introduced two new signals, PC write. This essentially blocks the update of the address and forces the next instruction to be read one more time from the instruction memory. And similarly, the IFID write signal by setting this to zero, we ensure that even though the instruction was fetched, it does not propagate down and cause further updates to the pipeline registers. Remember that all other signals could actually be don't cares. That is to say, while doing any logic optimization, we could set them to X and let the logic optimizer take care of minimizing the logic in any way that it finds suitable. Because ultimately all that we care about is that the state of the system itself should not get changed in any way that is permanent and, and that conflicts with what would have been the normal computation if we assume correct operation of the instructions.